In this video, we're going to look at Boolean expressions and see how to turn them into both logic diagrams and truth tables, or to derive the logic diagrams and truth tables from that original Boolean expression. We're going to look at two quick examples, and uh, hopefully that'll be enough to help you write your own. So the first example is very simple. We've got A and not B. And uh, we want to notice two things about the Boolean expressions. One, it's inputs, and two, the operations that are being used in the expression. So in this example, we've got two inputs, A and B, and two operations, AND and NOT. The inputs, uh, we'll begin with those. We're just going to list them vertically on the left-hand side of our diagram. So we're going to start with the logic diagram. Like I said, list the two inputs in this case, A and B. And give yourself some space because the operations that we're performing on these inputs need to have room um, in order for us to draw the gates that are associated with those operations. Okay, so I've got A and B, and so now I want to look at how are these A and B inputs related to each other? What is happening to them? How are they being operated on to produce the output? All right, and I see I've got an AND gate, and that uh, one of the inputs to the AND gate is A itself. So let's begin, begin there. So A, we'll draw a wire or a connection to an AND gate. I'm just making that bend in the wire to put that AND gate more in the center. It's not really important. But recall what an AND gate looks like. The other input to the AND gate, now I look to the other side, and I see that the other input is not B. So not B itself. I don't want to just draw a connection from B to the AND gate. I need to negate B before using it as an input. So we'll insert a NOT gate, or negation, on the B input before connecting it to the AND gate. And once we've done that, the output of that AND gate will be this expression. So this is a complete logic diagram for this particular Boolean expression. And again, the output is over here on the right. Okay, um, I want now to create the truth table that goes along with this expression and tells us for each given possible set of inputs, what is the output, right? And so we're going to do something similar. We're going to start with the left-hand column, and we're going to label that column A for A's input. Likewise, the next column we're going to use is B's input. Now keep in mind, A and B are binary inputs, and so they can take on one of two values, either 0 or 1. And so we'll start um, with A equal to 0 and B equal to 0, and I'm going to list all possible combinations of 0 and 1 for inputs A and B. And we'll move from there, we'll keep A at 0 and set B to 1, and then we'll set A to 1 and keep B at 0, and then lastly we'll make them both 1. And for each of these combinations of inputs, we want to know what the possible output is. Now the output is going to be the final column here. This is the A and not B. I'll label that right now. A and not B. This third column is kind of optional. It's up to you whether or not you want to have it. You know, these, these two are our inputs. The last column is our output. And this intermediate optional column will be for uh, the intermediate values, in this case, not B. So I'm going to use not B here because that it's not, a, it's not a, a fundamental input, right? But it's an input into this AND gate. So it's sort of this intermediate um, intermediate level of processing here. Um, it's the uh, output of one gate, but the input of another gate. So um, you may or may not want to include that. It's just sort of there to help us keep track or, or calculate or process or evaluate the final uh, expression. In this case, it, you know, 
it's pretty simple. Um, you can kind of do not be in your head and, and continue to process this. But as you get to more and more complicated Boolean expressions and their logic diagrams, it's helpful to have these intermediate columns to help you keep track of uh, what the intermediate outputs are uh, at the various levels of, of the diagram. So uh, if, now keep in mind, not B is not an independent input. It's dependent upon B. So we just look to the B column. Not B is 1 in this case, not B is 0 in this case, not B is 1 here, and 0 here. But now we have all the information we need to compute the final output. And so I'm going to look to the A and the not B columns and AND those together to get the final answer. Remember AND, in order for AND to be true or 1, both of the inputs or all of the inputs have to be true or 1, depending on how you're thinking about that. So 0 AND 1 is 0. 0 and 0 is 0. 1 and 1 is 1, and 1 and 0 is 0. And there's our truth table for A and not B. Let's look at a slightly more complicated example. This one uh, still has two inputs, A and B, but we've got a, another gate and uh, a couple um, another level of, of uh, processing to look at here. So we've got A or B, exclusive or, not B. Okay? And notice the use of parentheses here. It's a really good idea to be liberal with your use of parentheses so that it's really clear uh, the order in which you want the, the processing to evaluate. Typically, you know, the order of operations in Boolean is that the not comes first, so uh, you know, any nots happen before anything else. Um, and then typically exclusive ors, and then ands, and then finally ors, um, but you don't want to just rely on that. It's much more clear if you use parentheses to help um, make that more readable and understandable. So let's again list the inputs in this case. A, B, okay? I see A or B, um, and I see that that's exclusive ord with a not B. Okay, so in this case, I see I have a B and I have a not B, right? So that means uh, there's going to have to be a branching happening from B. And, and notice I'm kind of looking ahead at this expression to sort of see what's going to have to happen before just sort of hurrying up and, and writing what I see at the beginning of the expression. I see I need A or B, but I also need a not B. So there's going to be a branching for this B. Uh, and then I see, of course, this exclusive or. Now, the more to the right things are, right? Um, typically, the more to the right they're going to be in the uh, logic diagram as well. Uh, and when you see parentheses, those things are going to be kind of more to the left because they're happening first, right? So you want to kind of keep that in mind. I've got an OR gate kind of happening early on because it's in parentheses. I've got a NOT happening, um, again, kind of early on because NOT takes precedence over anything else. And then lastly, I kind of have this exclusive OR. So uh, let's go ahead and do our, our A or B. And I, I look ahead, and A is only used in this OR gate. It's never used again. So I feel good about putting the OR gate close to the A. There's our OR gate. And I'm happy to just connect that straight to A. I see that I want to connect B to that as well. But I'm going to use B later on. So I'll, I'll branch another B off. Okay, so I can uh, branch, just write a, a connection here, right, to indicate that B is going into two different, uh, or being used in more than one input, right, more than one gate. So B is going directly into this OR gate, taking care of A or B, but now I also want to negate B so I can use it in the exclusive OR. And the two inputs to the exclusive OR are the output from the OR gate, and not B. And the exclusive OR gate has that curve in front of it to the left. And this is our, our logic diagram. And our output comes out here. If we look at the truth table, again, A and B are our only fundamental inputs there. But we've got some intermediate values, um, A or B, as well as not B. 
and then our final output, which is the entire thing. Again, those intermediate columns are uh, somewhat optional, but helpful as you go to write the final output. Two inputs yield four possible combinations when we think about the binary, possible binary values of those two inputs. So we'll write those to start with. A or B is true if either A or B is true or both. So we're going to have 0, 1, 1, 1. Not B, of course, is true when B is false. So or is 1 when b is 0. So we'll negate b. And then lastly, to look at this final output, now I only need to look at these two columns because they contain the two inputs that, that are the intermediate outputs of these gates, right? So um, I want to exclusive or these last two columns. Uh, and so when you exclusive or, the result is true if either but not both of the two inputs is true. So 0, 1, that's a 1. 1, 0, that's a 1. 1, 1, that's a 0. 1, 0, that's a 1. Okay. And again, I use 1 and 0 uh, interchangeably with true and false respectively. So there you go. There's our logic diagram and our truth table for uh, these two Boolean expressions, and hopefully you can kind of extrapolate that to any of the Boolean expressions that you're working with. Good luck.